We had a pretty slow start this morning, uh, pretty discouraged, but luckily we got this big guy in one of the Crick systems that I was actually telling my buddy Brad that's filming that I don't have much faith in this system, but we got some nice one here. I don't know how big he is yet, but you know, some of these Cricks are too, it's not quite deep enough to drown them, so I'm gonna have to check them every day anyway. Uh, the water's actually starting to drop a lot more than I thought it would on about every system, but we got some nice one here. I'm gonna get him dispatched, but I'm gonna guess he's right around 50 pounds. Uh, this trap here is pulled all the way down to the bottom with nothing in it, so I don't know if if I had uh, his breeding breeding mate here or what, but we still got a really nice one here. I'm looking forward to, to throwing in the truck. First one of the day is spring beaver season, hell yeah. All right, guys, here we got a, a trap of mine got tripped off. Um, I'm not sure quite what happened. You know, it, it happens here, but this trap was under, it's really clear here, it's kind of deceiving, but it was under probably, I'm gonna say eight, 10 inches of water. Uh, looks like they actually brought the trap back up to the bank before it got out. Um, you know, I'm kind of new at this stuff still, but you can see my top stake here. You can see my bar going down to deeper water. But if you look right over here, if I can get it without the glare of the water, maybe find him there right in there we've got a drowned beaver uh, just right here next to this set we put two out here we're gonna actually walk upstream here because we've got a uh, nice dam that we're gonna check out today but we got one here at least so happy with that yeah we're uh, on another location here this water system dropped what would you say Brad almost a foot at least yeah yeah, because all that uh, mud was underwater yesterday. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those ones where it was, we knew it wasn't going to drown them, so we'd have to check it every day, but there was no mud exposed here. Uh, as you can tell, we caught a little beaver. I don't know if he drowned before the water went down or if, you know, what happened there, but uh, over here on my side, um, you couldn't even see my stake yesterday. So there's the stake, but I don't see the stick that I put through the chain. Uh, I'm going to show you that little trick here. I learned it a couple years ago and it really, really helps me out when it comes to checking these things. So I'm gonna go down there and uh, see what we got on this side. All right, we just pulled, uh, I pulled this set up here. Um, I told you I couldn't see my stick anymore. And I'm about to show you what I was talking about. Uh, again, here's my drown rod system. Just that square tubing on a half inch rod. Uh, this one has a second rebar welded to the side. I've got several that have washers welded to them. Uh, just a little bit of everything, but you know, he was out there under, oh, I don't know, probably four foot of water and, and dispatched himself. So the top side of this thing, we've just got a, one of my, um, it's either my fish stick sets. Yeah, this one's a fish stick set. My fish stick steak, or I'm using my snare poles from season. Uh, just going in the top here and staking down the top end. Just in case they were to pull the bottom end out of the mud, because I jabbed this rebar down in the mud pretty good. If they pull that out, the top end's going to keep them from swimming off with my setup. So, anyway, I'll show you the remake on this, guys. All right, guys. So, here's my remake of this set. Um, I'm actually pretty pumped. This system, this is our first double. You know, we got two sets at just about every location. And to catch two is the first time. It's pretty awesome. But, uh, anyway, you can actually see my lock on the pole right there. There's my lock, uh, you know, that goes down the pole that's attached to the trap. That stick right there, first off, it kind of acts as a guide. You know, what these beaver are wanting to do is they're gonna swim. If they're going downstream, they're gonna catch that and they're gonna circle and come upstream and hopefully come right through here. So it kind of acts as a natural guide for them. At the same time, it goes through the swivel that attaches my trap to the drowner. So if I come over here tomorrow and that stick is gone, that means that that trap is snapped off and it has moved to the bottom of the drowner. So, you know, either something really crappy happened or we got we got something waiting for us on the bottom. But uh, just something, you know, that way I don't have to come down here every time and check. Oh, yep, trap's still set. If that stick's gone, that means that trap is on the bottom of the drowner. So I, I wish I could give credit to whoever taught me that. It's been a couple years ago I learned that trick. And definitely something that's helped me on my line, especially with stuff like this or any type of drowning situation. But uh, anyway, guys, we're... Not quite halfway through yet, and we got a bunch more stuff to set, so we're gonna keep rolling. Well, we're not done setting or checking traps today, but we, uh, 
you know some of the stuff that we, we've produced on today were bridges that we thought were eh, iffy at best uh, since we've actually produced on a couple of them we decided all the other iffy bridges that we skipped yesterday we're gonna go ahead and set today uh, this is one we got right here stick comes out of the bank just kind of funnels them up and around uh, nice little set you can see up on the bank I mean it's tore up they've been up here before definitely definitely tearing stuff up I, I wish I could have got on the other bank here but as you can tell there's no vertical bank it's just a soup kind of nasty no really nowhere for a drowner really not even one that I'd feel comfortable with you know with them not drowning I mean they're gonna be completely out of the water here uh, over on the other side of the bridge we got one I uh, put a set in right down there you can see the stick that's the stick that's in the chain uh, there's the top of my my rebar is holding it up, but you know nice little spot. I I slicked it up pretty good over here uh, We knew we knew this is gonna be a good spot when we pulled up and over here on this bank I mean there's beaver chewings and just beaver tracks everywhere But I mean you can see the bottom right there. It's literally six inches of water less I just feel better about pulling them over here to somewhere where I can drown them or at least get them a good effort to drowning them uh, But it's just a really really nice crick system uh, we're gonna be setting a lot more of these today even though there's no sign on them Well, this one does but even the ones that don't have sign, you know We caught a beaver earlier on so and then our biggest one was probably 50 maybe in 55 pounds So that tells me that you know, you don't have to have the sign that they're gonna be moving right now So speaking of moving we're gonna get down the road. We got a lot of stuff to do today All right, here's a set I made yesterday and that little uh, pocket looking set there kind of a little cubby whatever you want to call it, but if you look, there's all kinds of beaver tracks fresh on the bank. Uh, the trap was right down in here. I don't see my stick anywhere, but there's my rod going down, and I see no lock on it. So, pretty optimistic. Looking forward to get down there, seeing what we got on the end of that sucker. I can remember how the hell I even got down there. <laughs> Probably about like that. About like that. Oh, mini me. <laughs> of course. Hey, it's still a beaver, though. That counts. Yeah, it counts. I mean, it might be just a really big muskrat, but <laughs> we'll still take him. All right, guys, going to kind of show you how I make one of these. Uh, of course, this has to be my Bridger four coil that I don't like doing over my knee, but. Okay, got the trap set. I'm gonna slide that drowner back up to the top of my rebar here. I'm gonna go out here. This actually drops off pretty quick, so it'll work out well. And just push, once you find that spot, push that sucker down into the mud as hard as you can. Um, you can see, like I said, my little cubby is right here. We're going to go ahead and flick that sucker up. Make it look like this is really being worked. Always hold on to your trap, too. When you start messing around with stuff like this, it's easy for that trap to go right down that drowner on you. And then you're pulling the whole thing back out. Now I'm gonna, I'm trying to target a back foot, so I'm not gonna set it really close. Uh, we're back here. Oh, it's pretty soft there. I don't like that. We're under 
probably good eight inches of water right here. Uh, I'm gonna kind of fence him in just a little bit here. You know, I told you about that stick through the chain. There's my stick through the chain that's gonna, I'll be able, that's why I can tell that, you know, the trap's at least moved and off, off the, the set here. I'll probably put this one in, kind of like so. Uh, I don't get too creative with it. You know, I kind of try and stay halfway subtle. But I might do something like that. That's going to force him right up over the pan. A lot of guys, and you know, I'm no expert at this, guys, but a lot of guys like to make big caster mounds. I'm literally taking a stick, dipping it in my caster, and sticking it in the bank. Brad, can you zoom in on that? That's all it is, guys. You know, I got that trap over here. It's offset just a little bit. Uh, you know, it's a kind of wide, wide animal. So point at your caster stick. Caster stick right here. Oh, right there. Okay. But you know, they're a wide animal. Uh, this is offset just a little bit. Nothing crazy. But yeah, I, I like that. I'm looking forward to having another one tomorrow. Hopefully, we can get Daddy tomorrow instead of Baby. Alrighty. Might be in trouble here. Oh, there we go. Oh. There. Hey. Lucky there. Lucky there. There we go. Oh. Nice beaver. Nice beaver. Snared right behind the front legs. Oh, we needed that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we needed that. It's been a rough day. I uh, did not have the sets that we were hoping for. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But... Oh, well. We're going to have to go get the cutters and a new snare for this sucker, too. So. Anyways, that's our first snared one. Finally glad we got one. <coughs> Set a few snares. Not much luck on them today, but I don't know. It's just, just a rough day in general, but I think the next few days are going to be better. It's pretty hot right now. That's up to like 60 some degrees. But. Nice beaver. I think it's number six for the day. We got a couple more spots to check. And then we got a couple farms to go check and to set some more ground on some private ground. So anyway, hopefully we have a couple more show you here in a little bit. All right, bud. Well, last spot. And we got one that did not dispatch itself either. Just the drowning rod wasn't deep enough, which it kind of appears to be, but Really nice beaver on the last stop. As you heard from my coon trapping videos, I always love to end on a positive note. So This is a big one too. I'm not quite sure how big he is, but we'll take another video of him once we get him out of here. But just a nice, nice big crick system here, guys. Uh, just a, a waterway, you know, no real physical sign of beaver, but you know they're here, you know, on bodies of water like this. Uh, here's a little better view of him. He's, he's pretty good size, I think. So we'll get him dispatched and get him up here on the bank. All right, we just got back home here. Ended up with seven. Uh, sorry about not getting that last one on footage when I pulled up to the bank. It was actually the, the second to the farthest to the right here. So really good beaver, probably, oh, I'm gonna say 45 pounds, maybe 50. Uh, haven't weighed in on yet. We got two really small pups here, but you know, the other, other five are pretty good size. So we're gonna get these guys. I'm gonna put them in the shade for right now. Uh, not sure if I'll get a set on this on these beavers or not, but I'm going to do a skinning video, caster removal, stuff like that. Just not sure if it's going to be this group or not. I'm pretty pretty beat. It was a long day setting more stuff. I'm whipped, but we're going to get them inside, get them cooled down, and then probably go inside, spend some time with the family. And as warm as it is, I'm sure the wife's going to want to go on a, on a walk here in a little bit, which is really the last thing I really want to do right now. But, you know, get to spend some time with the family, so... Alright guys, I'll uh, see you guys tomorrow.